Adam Price has been preaching the Sermon on the Mount up in Betus there, and independence is always at Adam's core. The movement for independence appears to be overtaking plight in popularity. Around 30% of Welsh people in polls that, uh, that, that indicate they vote Plaid Cymru are not in favour of independence. Why is that, do you think? I think that the people will have many reasons for voting for Plaid. Sometimes they'll be voting for a strong uh, local representative. Sometimes they'll be voting for us as a powerful voice up in Westminster, even though they know we're never going to form a government. Sometimes they'll be voting for us because they like the policies that we deliver immediately if we were able to form or influence a Senedd um, a, a government, a government in the Senedd. Um, but I think people who support independence need to ask themselves a question, and that is, how do we get it? How do we get from where we are to where we want to be um, and that is the first step for that is to elect a pro-independence government. Now, there are only there's only us and the Greens and a couple of other really small parties on the fringes of Welsh nationalism. So what I'd say to anybody who wants independence this time in this coming election, if we can hold it in May, which I hope we will, is to vote for the party who say they'll deliver it. And, and then hold us to account for that. Um, and what, what the politics of Wales looks like after independence will be up to the people of Wales when that's happened. But the question for me is how, you know, first of all, can we afford not to be independent? And with the nature of the Conservative government we've got in London at the moment, you know, th these are not people who are acting in the interests of Wales, not by any manner of means. And, you know, as an independent country, we could borrow to invest all the things I was talking about before. We could make the best use of our natural resources, and we can't do that at the moment. So for me, independence is something that's needed to build the kind of country we need we need to live in and if people want independence there's only in most constituencies and most regions one serious option if that's your political priority you need to vote for a party that's got a chance of forming a government that, that has the faith in independence at its heart would you accept though that on the last elections for instance and on the votes for Plaid Cymru there was this issue Brexit was there and a lot of people tactically voted you've also got a lot of English speaking Plaid Cymru voters in the borders and certain areas of, of Wales is it is it a problem for Plaid Cymru that that you just can't convince the, the the total of that voting base that you have so many factions there over the Brexit issue over independence over the Welsh language there's so many issues there within implied wouldn't it be better if you pinned your flag to the mast and let the people of wales know where you stand as a party that is that you are welsh nationalists that you have this kind of historic chip on your shoulder over the history of wales and Plaid is, is sort of saying on, on one hand europe has given money and therefore we should go to europe you are ostracizing then the very people who voted for Plaid cymru but did uh, voted to, to leave so there's a oh. lot of a lot of dichotomies, a lot of, di lot of different issues, and it's very, very complicated for a Plaid Cymru voter and for Plaid Cymru as a party not to offend quite large elements of your voting po population, isn't it? Well, it, it, these are difficult issues, and there were divisions in all political parties around uh, Brexit. It's happened now, and now what we need to do is to elect a government that will defend the economy in Wales from the worst effects of that, see if there are any opportunities. There may be some, if you know, there may be some additional ways in which we can support, for example, the steel industry. As the deal stands at the moment, we can't, and we can't introduce state aids, but look at, look at what's there. I mean, people have just got to think about... I would ask people to think about who do you trust to put Wales first? Which political parties and which politicians do you think really care about what happens to us in our communities and not care about anything else? And the truth is that the big British political parties are always looking up to the other end of the M4 for their instructions. I mean, the Welsh Labour Party doesn't actually exist. It's not a legal entity. It doesn't have its own rules and regulations in that sense. And that's not to, to say it to be negative in any way. There are some brilliant people there. I've got a lot of personal respect for the First Minister, actually. You know, I knew him when we were social workers 100 years ago. And uh, But in the end, you know, he still believes that the union is good for Wales. And the facts just don't bear that out. I mean, we've been in a compulsory currency union with England since 1282, and we're poorer than Slovakia. You know, it just doesn't make sense. And so if people want a government that's going to really care for Wales, care for our communities, and if they want to vote for a party that's got a meaningful chance of forming that government, then, then that is plight. Do we need to work on our messaging? 
yes, we do. I think all political parties do. I think there's a, a bit of mistrust around politics generally. And I think some of the some of the people voted for Brexit for many reasons, but I think some of it was about giving what people perceived as the political establishment a bit of a kicking. Um, I've certainly learned from that personally uh, about how I try to communicate and, and how I, you know, how I want to, uh, us as a party to work. But in the end, it's as simple as that. You know, who who is going to put Wales first? And I think you know, if those people who are emotionally Welsh on the days of the rugby matches can think with their hearts and heads, they'll know who they can trust. But there are people, there are still, a, it's a large chunk of people out there who are going to say, if I vote for Plaid Cymru and we, they get in, uh, Adam Price is going to take us down the line of independence, break away from the union, and he's going to take us back into Europe. That doesn't sit well with a lot of people. They see it very much as Plaid Cymru in a nationalist bubble that will get into bed with anyone who gives the cash and recognition of Wales as independent That That is the long and the short of how people see it. I don't think that's a fair characterisation. I think there may be some people who who feel that. Um we are actually in 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 the next couple of weeks. We will be having a big conference on independence based on the uh, independent commission report, um, and that actually won't call the motion that goes for that won't call for an automatic re-entry to the European Union, uh, but will call on, re- on to renegotiate the relationship of Wales with the European Union uh, because we know that the deal we've got now isn't good for us. It isn't good for our manufacturing. It's got the potential to cause havoc for our farming. It's already causing havoc for our uh, our fishing communities um, so that just isn't the case of course we couldn't you know voting for adam as first minister and me me as the uh, am for uh, ms for Llanelli, that's that's not an automatic path either to independence or to europe because you know you couldn't we couldn't uh, commit to, t- to making wales independent we can commit to offering the people of wales a referendum and if they took that choice, then there would need to be a vote again before we changed our relationship with Europe. So this is about, you know, a vote for Plaid on these issues is about putting the power back in people's hands and letting the people of Wales decide what we want our future to look like. And that's everything from how we want to educate our children to how we want to create jobs, to how we want to contribute to ensuring that our children live on a better planet than the one that we live on now um, and those those are what the choices are or you can vote for a british party i mean the conservatives i'm worried about in wales they're losing some of their best people like susie davis like angela burns people who had conservative political views but believed in devolution and believed in wales um, and the labor party you know still led by a person who talks about the uk as a potential to redistribute wealth well it's got the potential but it hasn't done it since the 1970s if you look at the facts and figures um so those are the choices people will have to face and i guess it's up to us as plied to make sure that we we communicate those as well as we can you can see almost the the breakaway of ireland and scotland becoming complete maybe within five years or or, or so possibly becoming independent looking at that then can you can you envisage a wales as the only part of the union left with, with the UK, with England, Westminster then, uh, it may be the end, I mean, how, but we would have to have a very strong voice in Westminster. Would, would your tack change? Would you really be putting, you know, far more people forward, accepting that we are part of the union? That is how it's going to stay. We've had our chance. We've had a referendum. Maybe that failed. People of Wales voted to stay in the union. Where does it leave Plaid? What do you do then? I mean, you've got a Welsh Assembly you're not happy with, and you've got a Parliament you haven't got hardly a foot in. Where does it leave Plaid Cymru then? Well, I think uh, you may be right. I think that the people of Scotland may choose... um, to go and we have to remember they, the, the the loss of the last referendum is pre- is pre- presented as overwhelming it was nothing of the kind uh and so we may see that we may very well see a united ireland i think the question then for the people of wales is what happens to us because if we become you know an england and wales all in one world you know for, for wales see england as the encyclopedia britannica used to put it will will we survive as a nation at all we were talking earlier about our language and our culture and how important our rural communities are i think the more likely outcome of scotland leaving and ireland reuniting is that people of wales will support independence even more strongly i think that they will look at the possibility 
of being stuck with a bigger neighbor whose economy is very different from us, whose culture is very different from us. Worth remembering, I think, Alan, that since working men first got the vote in the 1870s, the people of Wales have never voted for a majority of Conservative MPs. But for about three quarters of that time, they've had a Conservative government that the people of England chose. Uh, We've always wanted to be a strong voice for Wales in Westminster while um, while that connection is still there. I'd argue that our MPs have really punched above their weight. Um, I do understand that there are people who will vote for us in local elections and Senate elections who perhaps don't at Westminster because they want to be part of something bigger. But I'd ask them to look at the performance of our Westminster MPs. So I think the, the more likely outcome, or as I say, of, of, of Scotland leaving Ireland, that changes the nature of the relationship and and that's a stronger argument for me for us to have our own voice on the international stage so we can develop new relationships with the other countries on these islands Welsh Labour quite clear or certainly haven't been clear on whether where they stand with independence that Mark Drakeford su- supports being part of the union do you not think then that whoever wins the next election in the UK, whether it be Conservative or Labour, I know, uh, I know Keir Stammer's uh, uh, instigated the commission into uh, sort of the, the Wales independence and so on. But do you think that either of those, given that none of them will, will support a breakaway Wales, will sort of offer the carrot and sort of persuade the Welsh people through the, the, that financial package, because there will be less in effect for Ireland, less in effect for Scotland. They've gone. They're not going to be treated as fairly as Wales, are they? You would, one would imagine. If they've left the party, they're not going to get the top table, are they? Well, if they're independent, they, they wouldn't and they wouldn't want to. Um, I can't see any likelihood of what you describe happen. It didn't happen in the in the 15 years of the of the Labour governments under Blair and Brown. We were still funded through all that time before devolution and afterwards on a basis of numbers, not on a basis of need. We were funded with a formula that wasn't fair to um, to, to Wales and was favourable to Scotland. Um, I certainly can't see Boris Johnson putting his hands in his pockets and and coughing up with a lot of extra money to persuade us to stay in the union. More likely, he's likely to try and bully us to weaken devolution. Well, he'll find he's picked on the wrong people, I think, if he does that. Um, So I just don't see, you know, if if, if we want to know what political parties have done, it it will do. It's worth looking at what they have done. And this is why I despair a bit about Mark Drakeford's commitment to the, the UK as a redistributive union. It was in the 1940s. It hugely was in the 1940s and the 50s and 60s to a certain extent. It has not been since Thatcher got elected in the 1980s. And they had 15 years of a Labour government where they could have changed all of that and they didn't. So, you know, I can't see Keir Starmer prioritising Wales. And I certainly know that Boris Johnson won't. So people of Wales then have to think about who will. And how are you going to get that message across apart from Adam up on Betus Mountain, giving us the, the oil up there? How are you going to get it across? Well, it's a real challenge, isn't it? Um, I mean, where Plaid traditionally is the strongest in terms of our campaigning is out there on the doorsteps, listening to what the community's concerns are, uh, picking those up, responding to them, addressing them, having those dialogues with people. It's certainly the kind of politics that I really enjoy. You know, every time I go out and knock doors, I, I earn some, I learn something, I find out something I didn't know about a community, I can take those issues up. Can't do that in COVID days. So we're experimenting with with different things. We've been doing Facebook Live. We've been using social media as much as we can. But that's a bit of a... It's a bit of a blunt instrument and it and you don't always reach the right people. We're engaged in a big uh, programme of telephoning people in, in the Llanelli constituency at the moment, just, just mostly to find out how people are, because that's another thing you do when you knock the doors. You can find out what local issues are, what people's individual problems are. We're getting a very good response to that. People are very pleased to hear from us. Um, There'll be a you know the usual national program of of uh, of, of communications, and we'll in the Tlaneshi campaign will support that. It's going to be a very different election if it happens in May. Um, it gives the big parties to one certain extent an advantage because, of course, they've got all the UK media as well as the uh, as well as the Welsh media. But you know, conversations like this are important. Using the local outlets, po- using our social media to to point people to the local outlets, to those outlets like yours that actually really do report on what's going on in our community. And um, 
more and more people have at least got access to email if they haven't got access to other uh, and and there are of course then the whole issues on broadband access and and and, and those are really important for big bits of the Flashley constituency and Carmarthenshire as a whole we'll just have to try to communicate with people as as much as we can in as many different ways as we can um it's not ideal, you know, if we could wave a magic wand and have all this COVID out of the way and get back on the doorsteps, nobody would be happier than me. But people's safety, of course, is the most important thing. And, you know, when you see how people working their socks off in our health and care services and how many of them have become ill and lost their lives, you know, we can't, nobody should be taking any risks right now. So we'll just have to do what we can with the virtual means and hope that by May, uh, you know, come April time, we might be able to get out on the doorsteps for at least a, a short part of the short campaign. We'll see. Hello, Mary Jones. Thank you very much for speaking to Clinetti Online. Thank you, Diolch. Thank you very much.